We're here at the Tornos showroom, Moutier. I'm here with David from Premier Machine Tools in front of a DT26. Now, this isn't a brand new machine, but you've got some brand new machines in the range coming out. Can you just explain what they are? Yeah, so the uh, DT range was originally launched around 2016 with a 13mm and a 26mm. The Tornos launched the um, 32mm and a 38mm version of this machine. So you can hit those really, those much larger diameters, which you wouldn't maybe originally think you could do with a sliding head machine. Yeah, and it just extends obviously that openness to the customer for, for a platform with a machine that they understand. So those bigger diameters, I guess someone who's traditionally run a fixed head machine shop might start thinking actually, well, I've got big parts, but maybe I've got some medium sized parts that I could actually get a lot more productivity out of one of these machines yeah. rather than a fixed head. Yeah. Obviously, it depends on the components and what you're doing, but yes, that's for sure. Okay, fair enough. So, these are not your most high-end machines. These are kind of slightly more entry-level Tornosses. But with an entry-level machine, normally you get kind of a much, uh, much smaller range of options available because they're trying to, you're trying to keep costs down. Yep. Is that the same with this machine? With the DT range, we, we offer two versions. So we have the S line uh, and the HP version. What we've got here is the HP. All right, okay, let's have a look the door up. So. The configuration internally is very similar. Um, some slight changes to the spindles, but other than that, they're very similar to look at. Um, but, but in here we have, um, well, we have the driven tool capability that you can see on the main operations. We have driven tool capability in counter operations as well. Um, and over the back there, we have a B axis, which is a plug and play option. Uh, which is a unique fe feature for the, uh, the DT range of machines. Right, okay, so there's, there's actually a lot of flexibility around, and I can yep. go in, as in, can I go in and physically take this B-axis yeah. out. So if you had two machines, for an example, um, both configured for B-axis, you could take the B-axis out of this machine, drop it into the other one, and use that with B-axis configuration. So, so you don't need to for buy someone it. exploring doing slightly more complex operations on the end face of a, of a part, trying to get yeah. some different faces or chamfers or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What other options are there for different kinds of features, like gears or, or yeah, threads? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, we, we have the, the options for gear hobbing, for polygon turning, for thread whirling. You can have high frequency spindles on here as well. So you've got a lot of flexibility in what is, as we term, an entry level machine, five axis, five linear axis, two C axis. So. Brilliant. So the linear axis has been obviously really fast. So someone buys this machine, it's the first sliding head on their shop floor. Because it's a sliding head, they want to run it all the time. Yep. But when you're running things all the time, what? But you've got problems with chip evacuation, swarf management. How do you deal with those with this machine? OK, so there are several ways we, we um, accommodate those issues if you like. Obviously the machine itself has a very good area for, for swarf evacuation so there's a big area for the swarf to drop. You can obviously have swarf conveyors um, to suit the type of materials that you're machining. Um, we also have the monitoring side of TISIS. So TISIS is the programming software that we can talk about a bit later. But we have the monitoring side of that which enables us to monitor the machine wherever we are really via the, we have a, a, a nice a TISIS tab option on the mobile phone that you can look at the machine. So you can see each machine and tell you exactly how much it's running, whether it's running right now, if you wake up at three yep. in the morning in a cold sweat thinking, oh my God, is my machine still going? Yep. Yes, it is. You're absolutely yeah, exactly, fine. Yeah. How long it's got left to run, how many parts it's made. So it gives you a lot of information and that can then be linked into the industry 4.0 uh, software as well that Tornos offer. Okay, so what about if you've got really stringy swarf though that you just can't quite get get under and I haven't quite got the power to get through. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got, you've got various options for that, really. You can use uh, high pressure coolant is one, up to sort of 70 bar for swarf management. 70 bar in a machine like this? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, amazing. I think 120 is maximum, but yeah, 70 bar for, for, for swarf management. We've got Active Chip Breaker Plus, um, and Taurus have some other different macros, like the Twister macro, which are all been developed to help manage the swarf um, which in effect is coming from a single tool in this kind of application. Definitely. Okay, so you've, you've, let's say someone's got the swarf control completely down, they've got, they're running the machine 24-7. The next problem is, I guess, your, your program, you don't know if that's the most optimized it can be for this machine. Mm -hmm. How do you help people optimize their programs and shave those last few seconds off their cycles? So that's a, another side of the TISIS software, really, um, that enables us to write a program on, on TISIS. We can write a program on the machine if we want to as well. Um, but we can have a virtual uh, representation of the machine so we can add options in and make sure that where we want those op options to go, they will fit. Um, and then once we've written the program, we can then optimize that program by using the, uh, the Gantt chart format at the bottom of the screen. Nice, that gives you a nice visual representation of the yeah. cycles you're going to be running. Shows you which ones, maybe you could shave a few more seconds yeah, off. Or move, this move from main ops to counter ops as an example, you know. 
So the fat control and the familiarity of it, does that help someone coming from a fixed head background, from maybe uh, someone who's considering a Tornos and it's their first, uh, first Tornos machine, but they've got a lot of sliding heads already? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Fanuc Control is obviously a well-known known system, twin-channel programming, uh, G and M codes are standard. Um, we're using Fanuc Macro, so that's all familiar information to, uh, uh, for familiar commands to uh, uh, users, yeah. So there's absolutely nothing new you need to learn to take on one of these Tornos machines and, and experience the fantastic engineering. What about if people maybe want to do, uh, what other options are there if they've got shorter parts, they don't, need, don't, they don't want such long remnants and save bit of material? So obviously we talked about the driven tool capabilities and so on, so, but on the, the uh, DT range and, and most of the machines now through the Tornos range, um, we're offering the uh, bush bush dish running. So you can run without a guy bush for your shorter parts, reduce the bar waste where you've got exotic materials that may be quite costly. Yeah, so would you, but um, exotic materials, so titanium, stainless steels, maybe super duplexes, is the machine capable of, of cutting those kinds of materials? Yeah, I mean, spindle powers, 10 kilowatts on the main and sub-spindle, so it's a very strong, rigid machine for, for any kind of material. And obviously the sliding head being so, holding the material right next to where you're cutting it, you can take big cuts as well, can't you? Yeah, I mean, you're limited to the tool geometries to a degree, but yeah, you can, you can uh, take a reasonably de reasonable depth of cut, yeah. Yeah, because on fixed heads, I guess you're kind of you're limited by the machine stability, whereas on sliding heads, generally you're, you're limited by the carbide itself, aren't you? In, to a degree, yeah. yeah. Yeah, fair enough. So, if someone's looking for uh, an entry level, or even they're looking for a, a brand new sliding head, what would you say to them to say, look, you need to check out Tornos? I think the the capabilities of the machine. It's a very simple machine with regards to its its concept, but it, it's a very capable machine. 